Hi there, my GCSE Revision. What I'm going to be talking about today is the Miller Ore Cash Management Model. I briefly spoke on the Balmore model in my previous video, so I'd recommend checking that out. But without further ado, let's get on with the Miller Ore Cash Management Model. So, this model is a stochastics model, which means that different amounts of cash payments are made at different points in time. So we're assuming that movements in cash inflows and outflows are random, unlike what we said with the Balmore model, which are fixed. But the Miller Ore model better represents the dynamic business environment because it's very unlikely to get the same cash inflows and outflows every single month, year on year. So this is why this model is stochastics, and we'll be able to see this better in the formula. So this model is best described using the, the graph. So I've got the graph here. I'll write days on the x-axis or time we'll say days though and then on the on the y-axis we'll say the daily cash balance cash balance so essentially in the miller or model what we have is this top bit here is what we call our upper limit And I'll describe how we calculate that later. And this red line is our lower limit. So now that we've got both of those in, this middle bit is called our return point. So this is the optimum cash balance, the cash balance which we want to be kept, really. But ideally, it's always going to be kept between the upper limit and lower limit. So I'll, I'll explain what happens. So let's say we are at the at the return point the cash the return cash balance so let's say we receive quite a lot of cash inflows which we weren't expecting we weren't expecting that so it keeps on rising keeps on rising maybe have some falls some drops but then it reaches our upper limit when it reaches our upper limit this is a signal to to buy marketable securities and when i say marketable securities these are investments which bring in a high interest let's say between eight to ten percent um so when we see this we'll buy and obviously if we buy marketable securities our cash balance is going to fall and we want to try and buy marketable securities worth the difference between the upper limit and the return point and that we represent on the graph like this straight downwards so what we have here is we've returned to our, our cash balance. Now, let's say we have a lot of spending. We have loads of spending during the month, let's say possibly because of coronavirus, changing political ideology. And what happens is we hit this lower limit. Once again, when we hit this lower limit, we're going to have to sell marketable securities to try and get back up to our return point now marketable securities are fairly liquid so we can get our money out really quickly these things can be stocks bonds um sometimes maybe even property but that's not as as liquid but essentially we sell marketable securities worth the difference between the return point and the lower limit and therefore as you can probably guess we're going to go straight we'll be going straight back up to to the top. So, now that we've got that out of the way, what we're going to be explaining is the formula. So, to calculate this return point, we use a special formula, and it's it's essentially working out the optimum optimum balance, and we'll call this Z star. So, I'll just quickly draw this in here. So, Z star is equal to Three times F, which is the fixed amount. F is the transaction cost of selling marketable securities. And then we have this variance squared, this standard deviation squared, squared, which is essentially variance. And this is incorporating the stochastics model. Because by doing this, we're assuming that the cash inflows and outflows are random. Then what we do is we go 4 over R, R being the opportunity cost of not having our money in marketable securities. Cube rooted plus our lower limit. 
Now our lower limit is set by management and this can be anything from 50,000, 20,000 and it's, it's dependent on a couple of factors. Now L, L is dependent upon the, the credit worthiness of the business. Now the more credit credit worthy, meaning they can get a loan more easily, meaning that there's no need to have a high lower limit. We can have quite a low lower limit because we can easily we easily have access to money. So what's the point in having a high a high lower limit? <clears throat> Essentially that's just wasting money. Next is the expected cash needs. Now if a company's needing a lot of cash, then we're gonna need a lower limit. A high lower limit and it's all about the desired minimum safety stock maybe a company is rather conservative and they like to see the cash in the bank i'm not going to say that's the most productive and efficient way but it'll be it'll, it'll be all right so now that we've essentially given um now we essentially can calculate this return point based off our lower limit now what we need to calculate is our upper limit now our upper limit is calculated based off this z star and the formula for this is get our pen to work it, the upper limit is equal to three star plus l so we from this value up here i'll choose a different color to make it more visible green this z star here is taken from this bit here and from then we can calculate our upper limit and that's where we buy marketable securities so that's essentially the miller or model in a nutshell and obviously with these two models there are limitations yes there's limitations with the balmore model but there can also be limitations with the miller or model these limitations can be um, it can be difficult to calculate. As you can see, that's a big, big formula to try and remember. Um, the need to continuously monitor the lower limit. So this return cash balance can constantly change. The reason they need to monitor this lower limit is because um, during times of recession, like the pandemic, they need this extra cash to help them get through, especially during lockdown. We've seen that with Weatherspoons. We've seen that with all sorts of companies, really. Shell... Um, and that, that is it for the Miller, Miller Ore model. Now, I hope this has been informative and I hope you really understand it. And definitely check out my Baumol model because I show you how to derive the formula. I will be doing another video showing how to derive the formula if you want it. So, thanks for watching. Goodbye.